One team playing to regain its pride while the other tries to maintain pace with the league's elite teams. Next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better not the f get out of it. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. The beautiful Pacific Northwest is playing host to LFL Football Night. Welcome inside the booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Bobby, we've got a Western Conference matchup, the Denver Dream taking on the Seattle Mist. Here are a pair of teams really headed in opposite directions early in the season, at least. With Seattle, you could argue they are in championship form. In Denver, they're playing the part of an expansion team. Hopefully, Denver can recover from that nightmare they had against Chicago. They let up over 90 points. They had no offense, no coaching, no nothing. They got to remember this game of football is fun. Go out there, enjoy the game. I think if they do that, they'll have a lot of success against Seattle. Now, talk to us. Is there anything with Denver that stood out, something they could possibly build on going through the season here? Well, the veteran player they have, Lauren Fogel, we know her as a defensive back in Las Vegas. They tried her at running back, and she was really good. I think that she can have a lot of success at running back, but she's the only physical person I know on that football team. The rest of the players have to get like Fogel. That's been one of the criticisms early against Denver, a very finesse-oriented team. Fogel gives them a little more of that physicality in the backfield. Now with Seattle, this is a team that the headlines in the offseason were really straightforward. They were the signings, the mega signings of the free agents, Jade Randall, Michelle Angel, Nicole Peterson, Danielle Hawkins. But in that season opener against Austin, a lot of that didn't translate, with the exception of Danielle Hawkins, who had one hell of a ball game. Talk to us about where Seattle is as a team at this point in the season. They're a solid football team from top to bottom. That opener against Austin, Austin's a good football team also, but I like the triplets, led by quarterback K.K. Matheny. Right now, she's one of the top three quarterbacks in the league, and of course, her running back, the Bull, Stevie Schnorr, is the most powerful running back, can run through anything. And then you mentioned Jade Randall. She was the MVP of 2016, didn't have a great opener, but that threesome should have a lot of success tonight. Well, the stage is set. Lauren Fogel in the Denver Dream taking on Stevie Schnorr and the Seattle Mist. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Denver Dream and the Seattle Mist. An opportunity, Bobby, for this Denver Dream to reassert some respectability. Hey, Coach Carlos Bates, he really thinks they have a shot tonight. His team is not really upset about that loss to Chicago. They said they're fired up and think they have a chance to beat Seattle. A short kick. That looks to be fielded by Jasmine Davies. Great field position for Denver. All the way out at the 23-yard line. Not a good kick at all by Cortez. A line drive right now. Denver is in scoring position at midfield. Wow, what a start for Denver. And if you're a struggling expansion team like the Dream, this is gift wrap for you. A starting position at midfield. A first and 10 now. That is Shalin Canfield, the Las Vegas native under center. She'll look to hand it off. Nothing doing. That is LaShonda Fowler and Michelle Angel on the tackle. Let's meet the starters for Denver. Asia Walker, wide receiver. Mallory McDowell, wide receiver. Mary Towner, tight end. Sasha Cruz, tight end. Lindsey Q, center. Haley Ryan, running back. Jalen Canfield, your quarterback. Denver's offense going backwards. This is a quarterback keeper, nothing doing. A great upfront surge by Seattle. Let's meet their starters. Stevie Schnorr, linebacker. LaShonda Fowler, corner. Jade Randall, safety. Michelle Angel, safety. Shay Norton, defensive end. Katie Whalen, defensive end. Jessica Hopkins, corner. Carlos Bates thinks he can throw against Seattle. 
going to be interesting to watch Canfield, the quarterback for Denver, go against the free safety, Michelle Angel, and Stevie Snore, the strong safety. That was a quick screen pass to Lauren Fogle. Incomplete. We talked about Fogle in the pregame show. We were expecting her to be the featured back tonight. Looks like they're trying to get her going with that screen pass. Hey, Coach Carlos Bates absolutely wants Fogle to be the focus, besides Canfield, to be the focus on this offense as a running back and a receiver. A fourth and 13, an early test for this Denver offense. Canfield back to pass over the middle. Great catch. That is Lauren Fogle, the aforementioned Las Vegas native. We sat down with her earlier. Being the only veteran on the team, um, talking to them afterwards, it was a big loss. It was a really big loss personally as well. Got together, had more focused practice. We came with a chip on our shoulder. It's definitely a different team that came today. You can tell she is the veteran that she is, and she's the leader of this team. They needed 12. She got 14 on that first down, Denver. I'll take it from here, Bobby Huko. It is a first down, Denver. That is Asia Walker. The five foot nine corner and plays a little receiver as well here. Not able to get the edge on this defense. I know that was for a loss, but you got to really be surprised right now. Denver had Seattle on their heels on the opening drive. That was a loss of two. This is already a better performance for this offense that we saw versus opening night. Another quick screen. That was a dangerous pass. Intended for Lauren Fogel, but LaShonda Fowler could have easily had picked that off. That ball should have been picked off Canfield. I don't know where she was thrown. Looked like it was going to be a quick hitch route. She threw it down as an out route. Bad play by Canfield. They've targeted Fogel, and they're going to get a look at Asia Walker is Denver. They like what they've seen from the five foot nine wide receiver offering a big target for Shalin Canfield. Well, they're going to go to Walker more because McDowell, their top receiver, is out with an injury. A third and 12. And going down is Canfield. Danielle Hawkins, the free agent signee from Dallas. Canfield has to get rid of this football. She knows Hawkins is coming on a blitz. You have to take that three-step drop. Bam, get rid of it. If not, that's going to happen. Big loss. That is one of the complaints with this offense. Not a lot of blocking up front. Hanfield was often beaten up in the season opener. Now facing another fourth down. This will be fourth and 15. Ball at the 20 of Seattle. Hanfield back to pass. Has a receiver up in the air and deflected and caught midair by Danielle Hawkins. A David Tyree type interception. As Seattle will take on over on downs and we take a media timeout. Back with more first quarter action after this. I said, oh, that's about to be a pick six. Because I have a player on this side. Hey, hey, what you hey, might hey, Are you talking about the one they you know, completed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to LFL football night. We've got head coach Chris Michelson and Michelle Angel, the free agent pickup of Seattle, both mic'd up. Chris Michelson really likes Michelle Angel, who's a quarterback playing safety. We knew we saw her in Dallas last year as a great quarterback starting at safety for Seattle. She said she almost had a pick six right there in the first series. Seattle also gaining really good field position here at midfield. A first down handoff. That is Dominique Malloy. And like a blur of light, Malloy gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Wow, it is tough to catch lightning. What blocking out front for Malloy. I don't think one Denver player got a hand on her. It was inside handoff sweep around the outside. Great stock blocking down the field. Seattle on the board, bam, like that. Dominique Malloy, to call her a speedster would be putting it lightly. Just blazing speed when she gets to the edge. She played for Vegas previous to this. In fact, Tui Suanoa said she's the number one back he's ever seen in the LFL. And Chris Michelson brings her in last year as a free agent. This is a two-point attempt by the Seattle offense. That looked to be deflected at the line of scrimmage. 
Well, our score will remain six to nothing, but how about that first outing for that Seattle offense? Wow, unbelievable. Dominique Malloy looked outstanding. That was a great play on defense right there by Denver. It was a quick, almost a hot read. KK Matheny, the defensive lineman, knew she couldn't get to Matheny. She jumped up and broke hey, up the play. You too, no, but you're, you're too used to looking at Lala. The, the safety stepped back in Lala's lane. Now, she could have made a play on it, right, but that wasn't the one. Okay. 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 We'll go over and film. That's called perfection. He was upset at KK Matheny's read on that extra point play. Absolutely. When you go after championships, that's what you do. He should be happy with the whole drive, the run, but you're right. She made the wrong read, and he let her know. A first down screen pass that was intended for Haley Ryan. Falling incomplete. Those are plays that you've got to make against the Seattle Miss. Hey, Coach Carlos Bates is not going to be happy. He told me before the game, Haley Ryan had to step her game up tonight because his number one receiver, Mallory McDowell, is out with an injury. I can't get on Ryan too much. She's from my hometown of Clifton, Virginia. You've got to make those screen passes against a powerhouse like Seattle. This is a keeper. And Daniel Hawkins has got the number of this offense. Again, sacking Canfield. That'll be a loss of four yards. Danielle Hawkins, she can totally disrupt an offense by herself. All fantasy player playing middle linebacker, came in here as a free agent, just destroying Denver right now. With the free agent signings of Hawkins and Jade Randall, they actually moved Hawkins around. She usually plays the defensive end position and now lining up at middle linebacker. A third and 14 for Canfield. No shot there, again intended for Haley Ryan. Haley Ryan was open. She ran a stop route. The ball was just overthrown. If it was thrown down low with her shoulder pads, that could have been a first down for Denver. This is where Denver's got to be careful. They're backed up to their own 11-yard line. If they turn it over on downs, they're going to give that Seattle offense a very short field to work with. No, you're right, 100%. They came out strong. You can see there's a little pep in their step tonight. Compared to that game against Chicago, they're ready to go. The offense is playing okay. She's just going to have to be more accurate with her passes. Fourth and 14. That's not going to get it done. A quick screen to Asia Walker. And the defense led by LaShonda Fowler completely smelling that out. That is all on the head coach, Carlos Bates. Fourth and 14, you run a tunnel screen. There's no possible way that play is going to work. That's like handing a ball back to Seattle. And speaking to offensive coordinator Jason Gines of Denver, part of the challenge is they just don't have the personnel to get down the field. KK Matheny, very solid. This is her seventh year in the LFL. A first and goal for Matheny and company. Toss right. That goes to Dominique Collins breaking through arm tackles. That is just way too easy. Touchdown, Seattle. Haley Ryan had a chance to get her, but you're right. She broke her ankle with one move. The blocking wasn't as good as her first run, but bam, bam, just like that. Two touchdowns for Malloy. I don't think I've seen a defense give up successive one-play scoring drives in the history of the league. I don't think this defense has ever seen a running back like Dominique Malloy. Wow. A two-point attempt. Handoff to Randall. And Randall just slicing through the defense. That will extend Seattle's lead to 14 to nothing. Free safety, Haley Ryan had her angled perfectly to stop her one-on-one, -on -one, but Jade Randall just juked her. Just poor form tackling by the free safety for Denver. Denver will go back to work on offense. Hanfield now setting up in the wishbone. I don't think we've seen this set from the dream just yet. Handoff, nothing doing again. That was Danielle Hawkins with the loss. Carlos Bates told me he's got multiple looks tonight. We got on him last week, or last game against Chicago, because he had such a boring offense. He said he's going to mix it up. I didn't expect him to break out the wishbone, though. Sometimes the defense will dictate that as well, namely Katie Whelan. Whelan taking a year off from the Seattle Miss to pursue a military career. Back this year, she was an all-star defensive end. A second and 12 now. Another slant set up. That'll be intercepted. That looked to be deflected at the line of scrimmage. And Stevie the Bull Schnorr 
coming up with another interception. Wow, 90% of plane crashes are because of pilot error. That's all on the quarterback. You have to throw through a window, not in the back of your tackle's head. She threw that right into her lineman. It bounced up, and Stevie Schnorr picked it off. All on the quarterback right there. How about the athleticism of Schnorr to see that ball get deflected and scoop it up, setting up her offense beautifully again, this time inside the Denver 13-yard line. A first and 10, Matheny from the shotgun handoff again, Malloy. And why not? That is three successive plays for Malloy, equaling three touchdowns. Great call by head coach Chris Michelson. The same exact play inside handoff. Three lead blockers. LaShonda Fowler takes the free safety and literally throws her in the stand. And Dominique Malloy walks in the end zone again. This offense is just too powerful for that front line of Denver. And Denver is a very finesse-oriented defense. It's not something you can do. No, you have to attack against Seattle. They're getting no penetration at all. Another two-point attempt. Nobody in the flat. And that is Shea Norton just walking into the end zone, extending Seattle's lead to 22 to nothing. They had straight man-to-man -man coverage, but nobody covered Shea Norton. Just terrible coverage on defense. Not impressed with his defense at all. Carlos Bates has got to be beside himself so far. I know earlier in the week, you and I met with the Denver coaching staff, and one of the things they highlighted was they've got to find a way to stay in this game in the second half. I'm not sure they're going to get out of the first quarter. They're already down 22 to nothing. To have a chance, they had to play mistake-free football. They started out hot, had the ball deep in the Seattle territory, and then turned the ball over. The quarterback made some bad throws and bad calls, and you're right, they're in danger of getting blown out. Not sure what happened there. Asia Walker turned in. That looked to be set up to the outside shoulder. Bad communication, bad route, and a bad throw again. The quarterback is not throwing the ball well right now. Canfield, she's got an arm. The coach likes the way she throws, but she's not accurate right now. She's not finding windows. What I don't understand is that you've got a quarterback that's visibly struggling, and you're not establishing a run game to give her any reprieve. I was going to say, the only way they're moving the football is getting it into the hands of Lauren Fogle. That first drive, a pass, a run, they haven't given it to her. A second and 10 reverse. That's Asia Walker losing the ball. They're going to mark her down. She did gain four on the reverse. I really have to question the play calling of Jason Giants right now. On the Seattle side, Coach Michelson gives it to the hot player, Dominic Malloy. Keep giving it to her. Fogel got the ball moving for Denver. She hasn't seen it since. We are getting a report now that Lauren Fogel is injured. That explains why she's not being targeted. She's out of the lineup. A third and six. Hanfield now going to keep it herself. Nothing doing. That is Jade Randall and Jessica Hopkins on the stop. That'll set up another fourth down. Again, the quarterback Canfield has to get rid of the football. It's a bam, bam, bam play. One-on-one -on -one coverage. You have to give your receiver a chance. She did not. This should take us to the end of the first quarter. Unless Denver gets a playoff. Now, Coach Jason Gines is saying, hold off. Yeah, that'll do it for the first 10 minutes of play. And it has been all Seattle. And this fan loving it, Misfit Nation packing in the Shower Center. With Seattle up 22 to nothing. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Welcome back to LFL Football Night in the Pacific Northwest. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. And the hometown Seattle missed up comfortably 22 to nothing. This is the key play for Denver right now. Canfield has to come up with a play. A fourth and four. Hannah Turley getting to the edge. And that'll be a Denver first down. Wow, that was a great block by Lindsey Field. Watch her angle with the departure. She steals blocks the outside of Seattle, allowing the new running back, Hannah Turley, to get the first down. Great play, great block, and great run. That is exactly the confidence this offense needs. We saw a little bit of it early in the first quarter. They kind of went in the tank. 
Let's see if this results in anything. A first and 10 from the Seattle 23. Canfield faking the handoff, keeping it. Danielle Hawkins, the middle linebacker, is all over Canfield. That is the third time we've seen that play action pass. Canfield doesn't throw the football. Hannah Turley had one-on-one -on -one coverage against LaShonda Fowler. Just give her a chance on a quick post, boom, boom, boom. But again, she turned it up, she heard ghosts in the pocket and got nothing. Canfield has had a tough start here tonight. The only success this offense has had is on the ground. And unfortunately, their star running back, Lauren Fogel, is out of this game with a torn ACL. That pass deflected at the line. It'll set up a third and 11. Great read and react by Katie Whelan. She couldn't get to the quarterback, read the quarterback's eyes, knocked that play down. It could have been a big gator. Twin set, the out route was there. And Haley Ryan, the, the tackle, she knocks down Katie Whelan's hands. That's a big game for Denver. Didn't happen. Third and 11, you could hear this crowd coming to life. Another big crowd inside the Showwear Center. Easily the toughest place to play for any away team. A third and 11 play to the outside, complete this time. Complete to Haley Ryan. We got on Ryan earlier, finally coming up with a pass reception. Haley Ryan had some skills. She's the best athlete ever to come out of Clifton, Virginia. That play just had no shot at getting 11 yards. Nice try, that's my hometown. I can assure <laughs> you that I'm the 115th best athlete to come out of Clifton, Virginia. I'd like to see you run the 40 yard dash against Haley Ryan. I'm gonna take a pass on that. We've got a fourth and four here for this Denver offense. Hanfield back to pass, big pressure up the middle. Meet Danielle Hawkins. Hawkins has got to be spying Canfield. She has been all over number 15 here through the first half. She is definitely reading the quarterback's eyes. Canfield has to know her situation. This is a rookie mistake right here. Fourth and four, three-step drop. You have to give the receiver a chance to throw the football. If you don't, you get killed like that. Canfield very new to the position. Was not slated to be the starting quarterback but they've adjusted and put her in the position. She is a bit of a playmaker with her feet, but struggling to learn the mechanics of the quarterback position. She has talent. She just needs more game action, time under the center. On the other side of the ball, KK Matheny, one of the more seasoned quarterbacks. From the shotgun has a receiver. That is Jade Randall. And Randall somersaulting her way into the end zone. We talked about Randall not playing her part in the season opener, making a big impact early here. That has to be string music to Coach Michelson's ears. Watch the poise in the pocket by K.K. Matheny. Waits till Randall clears, throws a strike, hit and roll, and get in the end zone. What an athlete. Randall, the Harvard grad, was upset with herself following that Austin game. You knew that it was just going to be a matter of time before Matheny and Randall connected. That's what it takes. Repetition in practice, repetition in game, new receiver, great receiver, great speed. KK's got used to it. Great throw by Matheny. A two-point attempt, toss left, Stevie Schnorr. And the running of the Bulls. That'll add another two points. How about the fire and spunk of number 15? Might be only 5'2", but plays about 6'10". In fact, we talked about her confidence gaining at the position. I would say my comfort level where I'm at now as an eligible quarterback is, uh, you know, very high. I'm very confident on and off the field. Um, obviously, I know this offense inside and out. This is my third year with the Seattle Mist and my eighth year with the LFL. She is definitely the heart and soul of the Seattle team. And you can see tonight, it's not who you play, it's how you play. They're destroying Denver, but she has this team fighting like it's a championship game. First and 10 play for Canfield, and Canfield under heavy duress, barely getting that out. I think that was intended for Haley Ryan, but that ball had no shot. She's learning, though, get rid of the football. Tee it up again. She's taking shots. But again, a rookie quarterback. The coaches will tell her, three steps drop. You have to get rid of the football. That is Jason Gines, the offensive coordinator. 
really struggling to come up with some kind of rhythm for this offense. A second and 10 quick screen. Melee Rich, the fourth year corner all over that play. What you just mentioned is 100% right. They are picking plays at random. Usually it's a whole scheme, play action, go off the dive, go off the reverse. They're doing nothing. They're just trying to get anything going and it's not working. Canfield back to pass. That was about five yards in front of Haley Ryan, setting up a fourth and 11. Seattle came with a jailhouse blitz. Nobody touched three of the players. She got rid of it, but she was going backwards. That play never had a chance. This is the problem that a lot of the expansion teams have had earlier, or namely Pittsburgh and Denver. They've been giving their opponents very short fields, and again, Denver faces a fourth and 11 at their own 14-yard line. They forgot how they got there on that first drive when they were moving the football. One-on-one, -on -one, quick post, a little bit of movement in the backfield, but right now there's nobody in the backfield. Fourth and 11, nobody open. And you could see Seattle, they're rushing three to four defenders every play. They have to get more yardage than that. That play again, even if it's complete, is well short of the first down. They're handing the ball back to the mist. That is exactly what's going to happen here. K.K. Matheny will have a 14-yard field to work with. And I kind of like her chances with Dominique Malloy, Stevie the Bull Schnorr, Jade Randall. There are just too many weapons in this offense to give them a 14-yard field. This defense of Denver's is out-talented and outclassed right now. Everything Seattle is doing is working. First and 10, a deep drop for Matheny, back about five yards. Over the middle, has a receiver. That is Jade Randall again in the end zone. Perhaps they listened to us after that Austin game. We got a little on Randall for having a tough game. She's breaking free here. I like it. This is a heat check. You got a hot receiver catching everything. Go right back to her first play. She gets in the end zone. Keep her going. Great play by both them, KK Matheny and Jade Randall. Seattle just piling on the points. And you can see they're just having fun in the huddle. I think that's what you mentioned in the pregame show. Denver's just not having fun. This is just a stressful, overwhelming environment for them going up against Chicago and now Seattle. They have never seen an offense like that. This direction, they have no idea where the ball is going. They've never seen a machine like this. I feel bad for them right now. Dominique Malloy converting on the two-point conversion. Now 38 to nothing, Seattle up. Right now, you would think Denver would be in a hole. There is actually, we talked to the players before the game, there's a lot of fire on this team. It's just like, again, it's deer, deer in the headlight. You go against Chicago, one of the best, the champs, the former champs, Seattle. This is their first two games. They have hope. There's sparks in this offense. The defense totally has to wake up, though. Yeah, what a start that is. Here you go. Here's the schedule. You're going to match up against the two Legends Cup champion teams of the previous two seasons. In the long run, it's going to help them right now. They want to get out of here, probably. A first down completion, a slant pattern to Haley Ryan. They've had some success with that, specifically to Ryan. And she got rid of the football. Three steps, bam, 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 third step, throw it, complete. They got positive yardage moving the football. That, I already told them to watch that shit. When they line up with two, it's a pick play. Watch the fucking slant coming across. Just switch. Easy switch. Quick switch. Yeah. Michaelson knows that. The old rub. It's not a pick. It's a rub. So you just get a little bit of action. Opens up the other receiver. A second and four. Quick, quick little pass in the flat. I'm not sure if she caught that ball. We do have a penalty. Pass was intended and may be caught by Jasmine Davies. Head referee Nick Martin. Martin been with the LFL for four years. This is a veteran crew here in Seattle tonight. Prior to the change of possession, personal foul, face mask. Number four, the defense. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. That is a face mask on Katie Whelan. Let's see if we can catch it here in the replay. I like Nick Martin as a referee. I just don't like his eyesight. There's nothing there. She, she grabbed her hey, shoulders, hey. not her face mask. Bad call by Martin. White, white, white hat. Fucking A. God damn it. Watch out. And Watch out. Coach Chris Michelson wants a word with Nick Martin. Time out. Time out. He's upset about that face mask call. 
or maybe with his defense. We're going to take a listen in here. Go, go over there. Hey, is that 10? That's 10, right? Was that 10 yards? Was it a 10 or 15? Okay. okay. That's the most passive I've seen Michelson with an official. Okay. Listen, guys. Listen, they're putting, listen up, come here. Corners and safety. They're running the fucking pick play on the slant. I told you guys, that's the only thing they can do. So you, what the fuck are we doing? You either got to play extreme inside shade on the goddamn corner, or we got to switch and the safety got to help out. Somebody's got to help with that pick. They're picking the play. So if it's the rover, the safety, whoever the fuck it is over there, somebody is getting picked and they're getting that stupid fucking slant. They're going to keep running that motherfucker all night. They're getting five and six every time. It's their only successful play. So what do you want, inside shade? Inside shade. Inside shade, that's the way to play it. You can't pick, you can't get a rub because the receiver can't get into you to get by you for the pick. Great play by Michelson. Taking a timeout for a coaching point. I like that. There's a reason he is the only active Hall of Fame member of the LFL at the coaching fraternity. I like that, except for that guy from Miami a few years back. But Michelson knows the game better than anybody, defensively, offensively, and it shows the way they play. First and 10 from the Seattle 17. Canfield throwing off her back foot and getting slammed down to the ground. As bad as that looks, I actually like her getting rid of the football instead of taking a sack. There's nothing there. Usually in the first half, she, early in the first half, she takes a sack. She got rid of the football. How about the monsters on the edges for Seattle? Shay Norton, Danielle Hawkins, and Katie Whelan. They are absolutely loaded. It's a nightmare for a rookie quarterback. She's taken heat all night long, but those three can play with anybody in the league. Ball remains at the 17 of Seattle. Hanfield back to pass at the feet of Jasmine Davies. They've resorted to that dink and dunk offense because without McDowell, their top receiver, they have nobody to take the top off this coverage. There's no deep threat. So they're throwing the three-yard passes, which is okay. We have to complete the passes. This team is not very big either. That's been one of their setbacks. Not a lot of size up front and no power back. As we've said all night long, Fogel was their best opportunity, and she's out with an ACL tear. A third and 10 completion. Haley Ryan, that has been one of the bright spots. She had a rough start in the first quarter, but is really coming on. Haley Ryan, she has good hands, good speed, a good team player, a good possession receiver, knows how to catch the football in traffic like on that play. Now let's see if they can come through back-to-back -back plays here on fourth down. And here comes that Seattle crowd. They call it the eighth man or misfit nation. If you've ever been to a Seahawk game, it's a very similar environment here inside the Shower Center. A fourth down. And I'm not sure that was in pass interference. Michelle Angel got there a little early. Great anticipation by Angel. I think it was perfectly timed. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. The hometown Seattle missed up 38 to nothing. Welcome back to LFL Football Night in Seattle, Washington. The hometown missed up big, 38 to nothing. Coach Carlos Bates has to do something with defense, make some changes, some blitzes, some stunts, something. Another reverse to Malloy. Nobody touching number three as she gets out in the open field. That blazing track speed running through the secondary of Denver. Oh, this is not good, though. She looks injured. Malloy coming up with a bad wheel, but not before chewing up 24 yards on the ground. Great play again, great blocking out front. The only difference for Denver, Hannah Turley actually makes a great tackle to stop another touchdown by Malloy. She had some fire in her, in her heart that time. That's what they need more of on this defense. Dominique Malloy getting to the edge. There are not too many corners that can stop her. That was a 24-yard run. Matheny over the middle had a receiver and just overshot and outstretched Jessica Hopkins. Jessica Hopkins, former all-fantasy wide receiver. The ball a little high outside. Hopkins usually comes down with that. Jessica Hopkins, I'm sure, will appreciate the former all-fantasy wide receiver nod by Bobby Huco. Second and 10 now, ball at the Denver 12. Matheny under center this time. Handoff to the bull. 
And look at her bulldoze her way into the end zone. And this game is officially blown wide open. Great block by center Nicole Peterson opened up that for Stevie Schnorr. We sat down with the power back from Canada. I love the physicality of playing running back. I like going over there and bulldozing people over. <laughs> But that doesn't mean that that's the only part of my game. I'm a very smart player. I believe in my offense. I believe in my blockers. And if there's a hole open, I'm going to run to the hole rather than run someone over. I'm going to make the smart play every time. Fun to watch her play one of the premier backs in the LFL. A two-point conversion by Michelle Angel. You don't normally see Angel in the backfield. That'll extend Seattle's lead to 46 to nothing. Seattle had so many sets. That's her first touchdown with Seattle. She's keeping that football right there. Michelle Angel in the wishbone set. Great block by Stevie Schnorr to guide her in the end zone. Denver up against it now. How do you like these odds? An expansion team. No real deep threat, and you're down 46. They got a shot. They just have to score a lot of points. That's one way to look at it. A first and 10 play now. And we've already got this should be a delay a game on Denver. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first That is down. the mark of an expansion team. You had an entire series to prepare your play coming in, and you still can't get it off. I think they're in shock right now, including the head coach, Carlos Bates. He told me they thought they could win this game, and they are getting smoked right now. I think they're just in a state of shock. Backed up now first and 15, throwing into the flat and deflected. That could have been picked off by Melee Gilmore. It should have been picked off, but again, that's all on Canfield and her footwork. One-on-one -on -one coverage, her receiver had a chance to break open deep. She didn't give her a chance to throw it deep. She threw it underneath, should have been picked. Gilmore, a very underrated corner. This is now her fifth season with Seattle. They're gonna try to Gilmore's side again, no chance. I mean, the mechanics on Canfield are very poor. That's all coaching right there. They were they were horrible on that play. That was her worst of the night. Before the three-step drop, she looked good there. Just looked like a street play. And it looks like that Seattle defense has adjusted over to Haley Ryan. That has been the only threat this offense has had. And she can't go deep. There's no deep threat to get. I mean, the speed on Seattle, there's no possible way they can get over the top. So underneath, they're shutting everything off. We are inside of a minute remaining. And I'm not sure if I'm Denver, I don't just take a knee here and get out of the half. Again intended for that side, Michelle Angel. A lot of people forget she was an all-fantasy safety with Los Angeles. Coming up with that interception. Playing like a center fielder, Angel in the outfield. Watch her athletic ability. She catches this ball at the high point. She comes up, boom, pulls it down. A bad pass by Canfield going into double coverage. This offense just has no scheme. They haven't established the run, and the pass has no shot down the field at all. You hit the nail on the head. They are not even trying to run right now. You can't drop back and pass against this secondary without bringing them up with a running game, which they have nothing going right now. Seattle remains aggressive here in the shotgun, up 46 to nothing. They want another shot of this end zone. Rolling right, Matheny directing traffic, has a receiver in the seam, and just overshot. It appeared to be Jessica Hopkins. She was open in the end zone. KK Matheny just overthrew it. Denver had a chance to hit Matheny. You got to hit some shots on the quarterback, make like it feels a game. They got to her, but didn't hit her. We haven't even seen any real pressure schemes coming from the Denver defense. It's a very standard two-person rush, and that front line of Seattle is picking it up beautifully. You have to blitz Matheny to get to her to cause problems. Second and 10, Matheny with all kinds of time, again has a receiver. This time connecting with Jade Randall again. You want to talk about a big first half, number 18 has made an impact. Wow, what a route by Randall. In fact, KK Matheny was late on it. That route was so good, a deep out route. The three threw it on the button, but Randall again showing why she's the MVP of this league. That was kind of one of those Antonio Gates box out the defender play. Randall has played a bit of basketball, just blocked out the defender, went up and caught it at the highest point. 
tough to defend that. Tough, you can't defend that. KK Matheny a little bit late, but she looks good. This whole team looks good right now. How do you stop them? The running game, the blocking, the receptions, the quarterback, wow. Inside handoff, no chance at getting in front of the bull. This team is just being dominant up front. And when you have the kind of front line that Seattle has, and then you see a hole and a bull staring you right in the eye, that's got to be intimidating for any defense, much less a young defense like Denver. The front line of Seattle, Shade Norton, LaChonda Fowler, Nicole Peterson, absolutely destroying the defensive line of Denver. Carlos Bates, he has to come up with a different plan in his next game. Right now, they look like they're scared to tackle. In case you're keeping track of the score, we certainly are. It is 54 to nothing. We are on the doorstep of an LFL league record. Knowing Chris Michelson the way we know him, I know that's why he's throwing the football. He, I guarantee he knows what the league record is. A first and 10 play. Those two are not on the same page. We do have a penalty. That pass intended for Hannah Turley sailed well over her head. No rhyme or reason to this Denver offense right now. Pass interference, defense, number 10, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That is a break for that Denver offense. A penalty on LaShonda Fowler. That should set up a first and 10 at the Denver 25. Is it a hold or P.I.? What's the call? Coach Chris Michelson, he's been kind of mellow in his exchange with the officials. You think that has something to do with the scoreboard? Absolutely, but those little exchanges work for him. You saw that before. As soon as he called a timeout, he got a call going his way. First and 10, the ball at midfield. Canfield back to pass. Down the seam, intercepted again by Michelle Angel. Angel just reading the eyes of Canfield. A ball hawk back there going after the ball. Angel playing huge here in her second game in Seattle. Watch her eyes. She's reading Canfield's eyes. Canfield does not look anybody off. Being the athlete again, catches it at the high point. What a game by Michelle Angel so far. The success Angel had in Dallas as quarterback last year overshadowed her couple years at the safety position with Los Angeles. A lot of people thought, wow, why is she going to Seattle? You have K.K. Bethenia quarterback. They only knew Michelle Angel as a quarterback. She's showing why. She's an outstanding athlete. Player at running back, quarterback, wide receiver, and free safety. Now here's Seattle going after the record here. They're currently sitting at 54 points. They need 60 points. Dropping back to pass Matheny into the flat. Stevie Schnorr breaking through arm tackles, has a shot. Cuts back in. Touchdown, Seattle. Wow, grab a marshmallow. Stevie Storr is on fire. What a play. Nobody's going to bring that train down. How about the athleticism of number two? We've seen her do it out of the backfield. Now as a pass receiving back, a 33-yard touchdown. How about the competitive fire of Coach Chris Michelson? He always likes to one-up Keith Hack the head coach of Chicago. Knowing that, throws the ball to Schnorr, and she sets the record. Incredible. 62, or at least they're on the doorstep here of potentially 62 points through 20 minutes of play. That is hard to fathom that many points in one half. This Seattle Miss team now tied up with the Philadelphia Passion for 60 points. Passion doing it back in 2009. From the shotgun, Matheny rolling right. And just waiting on her receiver, almost dropped. That was caught by the center, Nicole Peterson. And we've got a new first half record. I love when Coach Michelson rolls out KK Matheny. She can run. You give her the run pass option. If the corner comes up, you dump it over, just like she did for points. Great play by KK. Nicole Peterson, former front office personnel with the LFL, now decided to lace him up. And what a decision and what a year she had last year in Dallas, now being signed by Seattle and making an impact here in the first half. We mentioned before the game, the Dallas players, the free agents, didn't really show up in the first game. They're all showing up tonight. And if I'm Denver again, I would take a knee here. You're down 62 to nothing on your side of the field with less than 10 seconds remaining. 
Yes. You got to get out of this half. Get out of this half, regroup, start over in the second half, but I totally agree. Stevie Schnorr smelling out that play. Melee! 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 Back, 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 back. Drop her! Drop! No! You're good, you're good. Chris Michelson directing his defense. Now Canfield again under pressure. Jade Randall, that is a loose ball. No, they're going to call Canfield down, or this could have gotten even uglier. What a finish for Seattle. Denver got lucky here. Randall came in, grabbed Canfield. It looked like a fumble to me. Referee Nick Martin trying to get it at halftime, too, it looked like. That should be Seattle ball. On second look, that seemed like the ground caused a fumble. That's Lauren Fogel. A blown ACL, the only offensive threat Denver had. Wow, you hate to see that. We talked about her in pregame. She started the game out hot. That does not look good. That'll do it for the first 20 minutes of play from Seattle, Washington. It has been all Seattle missed offense, defense, leading us to our halftime score of 62 to nothing. Welcome back to halftime of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Bobby, through 20 minutes of play, we've got a bit of a slaughter on our hands, 62 to nothing. Safe to say Seattle's amongst the league's elite. Unbelievable. NBA score. That was Dominique Malloy out there, not Stephon Curry. It was unbelievable first half for Seattle, but you're not going to believe this. I saw a little bit improvement on Denver's side. They completed a couple passes, but defensively, they were absolute train wreck. I think that's the real story there, right? Their defense. This is a bit of an ole Spanish matador type defense. On multiple occasions, this Seattle offense had one play scoring drives. You just can't do that against Seattle. Now let's talk about their defense a little bit. Denver's your former quarterback, former offensive coordinator in this league. Do you salivate when you see a passive, timid defense like the Denver Dream? No pun intended, but that's an offensive player's dream. That offense was clicking on all cylinders in the first half. KK Matheny, she wasn't touched in the pocket. They didn't get a hand on her. Dominique Malloy, one of the premier running backs. She can one-on-one -on -one get away from anybody, but they made her look invincible in the first half. Yeah, that Denver defense is struggling to say the least. Let's talk about Seattle now. This is a team that posted 62 points and gave up none. So certainly you can talk about a lot of people in their first half performances. What mainly stood out to you? I really like the fact that Chris Michelson, the head coach, got last year's MVP, Jade Randall, involved in that offense. Now with her back in action, playing up to her level, Matheny and Malloy, they're going to be unstoppable. Randall and company rolling through the first 20 minutes of play. It's time to get you ready for the second half. Can Denver rebound and gain some respect, or will the slaughter continue? Kickoff is next. Back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. LFL football night, Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. The hometown crowd loving it, and they're missed up 62 to nothing. How can't you love it if your offense, your Seattle offense, just set the league record 62 points in one half? I still can't believe it. That is Haley Ryan. She'll get us underway. And if you're Denver, you're hoping for anything here in the second half. They're facing one of the greatest feats or the greatest feat of any team being down 62 points through one half of football. That is Melee Rich returning it. Trying to find a seam to the outside and does. Great field position again for this Seattle offense. All the way out to midfield. That was all melee rich. Denver kept their lane integrity. It was decent coverage. <laughs> melee rich just juked her way right through everybody. KK Matheny again delivering for this Seattle offense. There was some talk about her being tested by Michelle Angel but she's really responded against Austin and again tonight against Denver. I just think it was a solid move by Chris Michelson, the head coach, bringing Angel in. You need a backup in case KK Matheny gets nicked up. Matheny back to pass. Speaking of Angel, connecting, and now the hook and ladder. Randall getting down to the, about the one yard line. Seattle really opening up that playbook. Wow, I love how head coach Chris Michelson called off the dogs being up 62 to nothing. The old hook and ladder executed perfectly by Michelle Angel. This is old Seattle offensive football. I love it. 
Head coach Chris Michelson, not the type to take the foot off the throttle. If you're going to come unprepared to Seattle, you're going to pay the price. He was taught by Jimmy Johnson. If you got him down, put your foot in their throat, and he's doing it tonight. Now a first and goal ball at the Denver one. There's a plethora of options here for this Seattle offense. That's Angel in motion. Matheny going to hand it off. Hopkins, nobody there defensively. Haley Ryan just lost at that corner position. Defensively, they have to get a lot better at getting better. They have not improved at all since the first half. There's nobody trying to make any tackles on that Denver side of the football. Watch this. Excellent blocking up front. Not taking anything away from Seattle, but nobody trying to make that tackle. you got to have a will if you're going to play defense in this league or any league. And look at this. K.K. Matheny in that offense having a little fun. Throwing the dollar bills around. Now, what's she doing with the uh, cash there? trying to make it rain here in Seattle. I think it's not raining outside. She's going to make it rain inside. You know what? When you're up this big, you get a creative license to have some fun. It's but, not the NFL. Absolutely right. But getting back to my point, if you're a defensive player, whether you play in the LFL, college football, or the NFL, you got to have a desire. And just look at the surge. There is nobody even contesting this offense. Not at all. But again, Man on man, woman on woman, they are out talented by Seattle. That's when the coaches have to step in with defensive schemes. Two on ones, twist, everything, blitzes. They're not doing anything different. Very vanilla defense. And you got to think are they doing that because they simply do not have the personnel defensively that has the sophistication to be able to execute on corner blitzes and twist, you know, end you rounds, twists, all those things? I, I don't think the confidence is there with this defense. And speaking of confidence, Canfield, the starting quarterback for Denver, we're just getting a report, is out also with concussion protocol. Now we've got their backup quarterback, Mary Towner. Wow. Canfield's out. Fogel's out. McDowell's out. All their offensive weapons, their top offensive whip weapons are not on the field right now. Not a way to start the second half if you're head coach Carlos Bates. Incredible. Not wasting any time. That was Mary Towner looking for Hannah Turley. An ugly pass off her back foot. Dropping back again. Looking for the slant and dropped. That is the second near interception by Melee Rich. Haley Ryan was supposed to run a quick bang eight pose, but she turned it up into a streak. The quarterback looking for the post, threw it there, should have been picked off. Watch, she's throwing the post on the inside. Haley's going up top, should have been picked off by Seattle. Seattle corners and safeties are having a field day with these Denver quarterbacks. It's a tough situation for the backup to come in. She has no weapons around her. They're not even putting a back in the offensive set. They're lining out twins on one side with a wide out on the other side with no backs. So there's no run threat right now. Mary Towner, give her some credit. I doubt she's gotten any reps this week. They certainly didn't expect her to get into this ball game. And now you're down to your number two quarterback. Third and 10 play. Towner back to pass under pressure. Just trying to get it out. Intended for Haley Ryan. That'll fall incomplete. And guess what? We've got a fourth and 10. That entire defensive line for Seattle, Wheeland, Randall, Hawkins, they can pin their ear, ears back because there's no running backs lined up in the backfield. They know she's dropping straight back. They're having their bull rush right now going right after. That Seattle crowd getting on Towner. Here comes the edge rush and up the middle. That is Danielle Hawkins. Hawkins has been absolutely disruptive to this Denver offense. Danielle Hawkins playing like the all fantasy player she is right there. There's no scheme though. I hate to put it on the quarterback because she's getting no help by the coaches. They're dropping her back and she's getting killed. This Seattle crowd loving every moment of this. Already up 70 to nothing. And here comes that offense. It'll be interesting to see how many of the starters and speaking of that is Michelle Angel. So we're going to get an early look at the backup quarterback. I was saying, let's see how many backups make it into the game for Seattle. A first and 10 handoff. Speaking of backups, 
That is Christine Cortez. Cortez getting into the end zone for Seattle. And if you're asking Cortez who, she's the third running back on the depth chart. Number three, and watch the explosion. Watch Fowler with a lead block. That's how to lead block right there. Open the holes. Nobody even heard of his name. Christine Cortez running untouched in the end zone. They are so stocked at running back. This is unbelievable. Great to see Michelle Angel in the game. She totally needs some rep to get into her game. Cortez, a Bothell, Washington native. Standing only at five foot two, about 130 pounds, and she gets into the end zone again. That will add to Seattle's lead, 77 to nothing. And this has got to be special for the backups. They didn't get a chance to play. Now they're playing in front of their home crowd. This is much needed, too. As they advance into the season and the playoffs, the backup quarterback, Michelle Angel, she totally needs reps, the running back, the line. Right now, though, the problem is they're not getting much defense. I mean, yeah, you're in the game playing your plays, you're running your plays, but nobody on Denver is trying to make any tackles. Yeah, at some point, even if you have, if you're outskilled, you're outmanned, you got to step up. Somebody's got to make a play defensively. There have been far too many drives by Seattle that have consisted of a single play. One single play, and their leader on defense, Lauren Fogle, is out. So somebody new has to step up. I know they're getting crushed, but somebody has to step up. A first and ten, a pump fake by Mary Towner. I don't think you've uh, earned the right for a pump fake. I mean, this has been an ugly offense. I really can't believe offensive coordinator Jason Giants has abandoned the running game. He's put it all on a backup quarterback who has had no reps in practice, hasn't been under fire at all. I believe Jason Giants just said the only saving grace we have is we've got a running clock right now. That is not a lot of confidence in your offense. Not at all, and it's a, it's a horrible attitude to have, quite frankly. I mean, yeah, you're playing against a top-level team in Seattle, but you got to have some reps for your players and learn the game. Nick Martin on the call. Pass interference, number 10 on the defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic. It's been down. about the only way that Denver has consistently moved the ball through Seattle penalties. That'll be a pass interference, giving Denver a first down. I still can't believe what I just heard from Jason Johns about the running clock. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you have young players in there. This is their second game ever in the LFL. They need to learn the game and learn to play. Mary Towner again under center. Receiver split to the right side and just at the feet of Hannah Turley. You can see there's not, not to cut you off, Bob, but you can see there's just not been any work done with Towner and these receivers. Not at all. And getting back to your point in the first half, if you're going to do this with a set with no running backs in there, put her in the shotgun like Dan Marino used to be. Give her some time to throw the ball. I think they're still hesitant based on what happened with Lindsey Fields in that opener against Chicago where she sailed three snaps over the head of Shailene Canfield and into the end zone. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Keep her under the center right now, but I just can't believe they're not even mixing this offense up at all. It's dropped back. Seattle's waiting on every pass she throws. I feel bad for her. And, and not to state the obvious, but it doesn't look like Towner's in the greatest shape either. So I don't know if she's going to buy you time in the pocket or give you any threat with her legs. Counter under center. This looks to be a reverse, and we've got a false start. That play had no shot. Nick Martin on the call. False start. Offense number 11. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. This Denver offense seems to be a bit intimidated by number 12, Danielle Hawkins. I think both quarterbacks on Denver will lose sleep for about a month thinking about number 12 tonight. A third and 15, ball backed up to the Denver 20-yard line. I can tell you what they're going to do. They're going to have nobody in the backfield, drop back, and throw probably a quick post. That's the only thing they try to do. And they've got to mix it up here at some point, regardless of the score. And that is exactly what happens. Ball deflected and intercepted by Danielle Hawkins. She has been an absolute behemoth defensively. If I can predict a play up here in the booth, do you think the secondary knows what's coming? 
a low throw popped up. Daniel Hawkins all over it, and here we go again. Seattle's got the ball back deep in Denver territory. Ball at the eight yard line to be exact. How about Danielle Hawkins? We make, made a huge deal about all the free agent signings, but she has been proved to be the best signing of any of those Dallas players. The best, except it looks like Jade Randall is making a run. She's having an outstanding game tonight. Looks like the MVP she was last year. And speaking of another Dallas free agent signing, that's number seven, Michelle Angel in at quarterback. From about the nine yard line, has a receiver in the flat. That is Shay Norton. And everyone getting into the act. That is a nine yard touchdown by Norton. It doesn't matter who Chris Michelson puts in the game. Wow. Norton celebrating. And I don't think I've ever seen that move before. Wow, I, I know there's mountains up here in Washington, but I've never seen him look like that. Wow. Norton just getting into the end zone. They're just clearing out the bench. This Seattle team is having a blast, twerking in the huddle, and this crowd is loving it. I don't want to be the one that rains on Seattle's parade, no pun intended, but be careful that you don't get a false confidence going up against Denver. That is a great point. This defense is not Los Angeles. This, they're having their way anything they do against this weak Denver team, but you're right. If they get too cocky, they're going to run into a, a brick wall in Los Angeles. Angel getting much-needed reps under center. It's great to know that you've got an insurance policy like number seven if something were to happen to KK Matheny. Great move by Chris Michelson acting as a general manager right there because most teams in any football league, at some point during the season, you need your backup to win games for you. Denver offensive coordinator Jason Gines giving the play to Hannah Turley. That's another thing I've noticed. There's no hand signals. Somebody's always having to run the play in or worse. The quarterback has to go to the OC, get the play, and come back. That's going to wear you out. Absolutely. And the quarterbacks are wearing the play sheet on their wrist, but they're not using the numbers. Second and seven play. Towner going to try to go up the middle. <laughs> Nothing doing. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And just like a proud Canadian, Stevie Schnorr apologizing to Mary Towner. You have to love this to a point as a player. I mean, obviously, talent-wise, they're not even close. But right now, you have a backup quarterback. And like you mentioned, there's some players on this team. Hannah Turley, Haley Ryan, the quarterback, Canfield, Fogle. If they get healthy, bringing back McDowell, they got a shot to play some good games. I think you have to just go to the back to the basics if you're Denver, blocking, tackling. I mean, this, this team is just very raw right now. Seattle bringing the blitz in again, Melee Rich steps away from another interception. Wow, Melee Rich, she has hands like feet. This should have been a pick six. Terrible pass, not reading coverage at all, throwing it up. Ball's right in her hand. She was in the end zone before she learned to catch the football. Should have been six points for Seattle. From my count, that is three dropped interceptions by Melee Rich. So regardless of the score, you got to know head coach Chris Michelson is going to look at this film and absolutely kill his defense as to how much more dominant they could have been. Knowing Chris Michelson, he'll probably call practice after this game to correct that. I don't doubt it. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter, a quarter that saw the hometown Seattle Mist extend its lead. They've done it with Danielle Hawkins and the play of Michelle Angel. Work hey, these guys in the fourth quarter. Let's go, okay? Get low, play behind your pads, okay, run go. somebody over, pancake somebody, okay? Back to LFL football night. That was offensive coordinator Jason Gines trying to give some motivation to a Denver team that is down 84 to nothing. I actually like that. That's a little fire. You would think that where you know fire in the fourth quarter. He said, just make something happen. A third and seven again, nearly intercepted. Guess who? Melee Rich. Wow, there is a reason Melee Rich is playing defensive back and not wide receiver. If you look close at her hands, I think they're all thumbs. Another drop. You could see her teammates having fun with her. Danielle Hawkins looking back and go, is that four now? Chris Michelson is not laughing, I guarantee you this. That's a lot of points the other way if she can catch. 
And especially in a close game like this, 84 <laughs> to nothing, you need every interception you can get your hands on. This is Mary Towner gaining four yards, not even close. They'll turn it over back to Seattle. Mary Towner is definitely not a running quarterback. She needs to just drop back and throw it. Twins right tight, twins right tight, 36 jet. I'm gonna take Stevie out, hold on. Melee, melee, yeah, 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 get in, get in. Get in, Lala. Melee, melee, offense, let's go. Melee, melee, stay in at three, stay in at, melee, stay in at three. Girl, you better wake up. Ah, damn. Stevie, Stevie, God damn it, melee. God damn it, you goofy sons of bitches. Chris Michelson, uh, you know what? I could just get him mic'd up and just listen to him all afternoon. But now we're watching Stevie Schnorr just ripping through that defense. I did not see a single hand on number two. That was supposed to be Melee Rich running the ball right there. That should be touchdown Melee Rich, but somehow Melee Rich screwed up the communication, left Stevie Schnorr in, and she scores more points. And I think the news just got broke to Stevie Schnorr that she wasn't even supposed to be in that <laughs> set. Everything going right for Seattle right now. Melee Rich, she might get fined tonight by Coach Michaels and drops pass, screws up the communication. It's not funny, but it is kind of funny. The extra point attempt now. Not that it's needed by Seattle. Christine Cortez, who scored earlier in the backfield, she'll get it on a toss and walk into the end zone. I mean, they can just call any play in the deepest playbook in the LFL, and they're gaining success tonight. You would think Seattle would back off. Jade Randall, the MVP of the league, destroyed the cornerback for Denver to open up that hole to Cortez to walk in. Well, what do they say? Whether it's in business or life or sports, you never play down to the competition. You play at your level, and that's what Seattle's doing right now. You're right. As I mentioned before, it's not who you play, it's how you play. Seattle certainly considered one of the elite teams alongside Los Angeles and Atlanta and Chicago from the Eastern Conference. That's really your power four. Power four, and they are all stacked top to bottom. There's a disappointed Canfield right there, the quarterback. She missed the whole second half. She was the only spark they had in the first half besides Fogel. Towner, quick screen at the feet of Haley Ryan. She can't even get the football up. No, I, I just don't, I don't get it why they're trying to throw the ball. She's not a thrower right now. Put the running backs in the game. Try to run some plays. The passing game is, is going absolutely nowhere. And what's more alarming for Denver is that sideline is like a triage. We talked about Lauren Fogle with a blown ACL. Apparently, Asia Walker is also out with an ankle. And now Canfield on concussion protocol. You would think this is a tie game. This is a classic hospital ball. A terrible pass by Towner. High. Oh, my gosh. I'm surprised she's not being carted off right now. What a hit by Stevie Schnorr. Hannah Turley just being teed up for this defense. Like you said, you never lob a ball, certainly not a screen, when the safety and corner are right on top of the receiver. That wasn't even a route. It wasn't even like a classic hitch pattern. It was just terrible all around, terrible pass, and thank God she didn't get hurt. Haley under center, looking left, now right. That one complete to Haley Ryan. That'll be good for seven yards, melee rich in coverage. They try the same play every down, the quick hitch route, the quick post, and finally they got one completed. That's the one thing I'd be alarmed if I'm the Seattle Miss defensive coordinator or this defense, that this Denver offense has completed some balls on. They have a couple. I mean, they get like two or three yards. I wouldn't be that concerned about it. In fact, you should know what's coming every play. Well, that would be the concerning part, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Knowing what's coming and you still can't stop it. A fourth and three over the middle. And that was deflected by Christine Cortez as once again, Denver will turn it over on downs. I know Towner's a backup quarterback, but if she would have set her bat foot and thrown the ball down the field, that could have been six points for Denver. The receiver had broken open. 
A first and 10 for the Seattle offense now. Ball at the Denver 22. And what do you do if you're Seattle now? You're on the doorstep of potentially 100 points. Now, you used to be a coach in this league. Do you kind of play the gentleman's role, or do you go for that c -note? But I'm from the University of Florida, and we played against Jimmy Johnson, those guys at Miami, and, you know, these backups right now, Michelle Angel, she wants to score points just like K.K. Matheny wants to. That is Christine Cortez running right up the middle. The third string running back having a lot of success here in the second half. But who isn't? That was good for 15 yards. To your point, Christine Cortez, she hasn't seen action all year long. It's the first time she's been playing this in this kind of spotlight. She's going to give 110% every play like she is. That run sets up a first and goal. Over five minutes still remain in this game. So they've got a legitimate shot at 100 points here. The way this Denver defense has played all night, and I see no reason to, see, to say they're going to play any different. They got a shot at 100. Sitting at 92 right now, toss left. Christine Cortez cutting back across the field and into the end zone. I wish I had a nickel for every time I've said Seattle touchdown tonight. Absolutely. I, I'm going to tell you what, Christine Cortez is good, but they're making her look like the beast with this run. Three players have a shot to bring her down, and nobody even puts a shoulder on her. Great play by her, but that was too easy. Great vision by Cortez to see nothing doing on the left side, then cutting clear across the field in route to the end zone. This is Angel on a design quarterback keeper. You could see Haley Ryan didn't want any piece of Angel. That'll get us to 99 points. This is great for the Seattle offense, getting these guys in the game. They're getting some action, having some fun, and scoring points on top of that. What do you do now if you're Denver? You've got a little over four minutes remaining. You can see Jason Giants. He is the offensive coordinator. Do you tell Mary Towner to just keep it on the ground, let's get out of here, or do you continue to run those inane five-yard slants? Well, first off, if I was the trainer for Denver, I would give both coaches, Carlos Bates and Jason Giants, a Snickers bar because they need something tonight. But on offense, they're going to do the same thing, drop back and probably throw a post. That is what happened. Oh, and that is intercepted. Christine Cortez just coming off a TD run, picks off Mary Towner. She is on fire right now. You're right, scoring a TD. Next play comes back, and she picks off Towner. What a fourth quarter by Cortez. This is awesome. That is the best example of tip drill. Having played safety in high school, we, we used to practice that, and you saw it play out there beautifully by Christine Cortez. That is one of the best drills you can do as a defensive back when you're doing Oski drills and trying to get interceptions. Perfectly played by Cortez. She's playing all fantasy here in the fourth quarter. Now here's the potential 100 point mark inside all the way down to the one yard line. And I'm not sure how Alyssa Stongel held on to number 20, Jamila Adams. Jamila's got, so she's got some wheels. We know about her. She's one of the fastest players on the team. I'm surprised she didn't get in the end zone, but everybody's playing tonight. You can hear chance of 100, 100 throughout this crowd. A first and goal ball at the Denver three. And off again to Jamila Adams. And there's defense, finally. That looked like Haley Ryan led the surge, but finally some life from that defense. Jamila Adams, she's going to get razzed in the locker room after the game. She's the only one that didn't gain positive yardage tonight, and that's true. It was a two-yard gain, though, Bobby. <laughs> Our statistician is saying that we did gain two yards there, so you can't razz Miss Jamila Adams just yet. Jamila, I take that back. I do take that back. I apologize. A second and goal, another shot at 100 points here. Look at Angel. You think she wants that 100 points? She was a starting quarterback for a great team last year in Dallas. She wants to play. And there it is, Jamila Adams. If she doesn't score another touchdown in the LFL, she'll go down as a trivia question. Jamila Adams taking Seattle over the 100-point mark. That will be a great trivia question. It's never happened to the LFL. I didn't even know the scoreboard could get that high. That looks incredible. Luckily, they host basketball in this building. 
<laughs> yes. 105 to nothing. If you'd have asked me back in 2009 that that would be a score, I would have doubted it. After the Chicago game, when they scored over 90, I never thought anybody get close to it. Here it is a couple weeks later, and Seattle tops 100. Incredible. Seattle now going for the one-point conversion to extend its lead to 106 to zero if they convert. And that is exactly what they do in the flat to LaShonda Fowler. This crowd has not left. Misfit Nation sending a message throughout the league. That will take us to the final two minutes in a game that Seattle has dominated from the first snap up 106 to nothing. I'm trying not to score. I'm literally trying not. <laughs> when you put Princess and run up the middle, you are trying to not score. Matter of fact, I was trying to give them the ball back. Coach Chris Michelson of Seattle in that bench having a lot of fun. Now, wait a minute. Coach Michelson said he wasn't trying to score. The extra point, he had a trip set, which, which set up Fowler one-on-one -on, -one on Mary Towner, and that's not trying to score? Throwing on the extra point? Come on, Chris. Quite a hit there on Towner. Towner, not exactly a small quarterback, not a, not afraid of contact. Not at all. She's a big, she can take hits. She just is not a real quarterback, but she's forced to play tonight. You can see her get the edge, and then melee pitch. Maybe that's a little of the frustration of missing four interceptions, killing Towner in the open field. I like the way Towner did not back down. She looked like Ashley Salerno of L.A. went head on head with Melee Rich, and she held her own. Yeah, I think they need a little bit of that spunk in this lineup. That pass deflected and intercepted. They're going to call that an incomplete pass, and if Chris Michelson challenges this, I think everybody should raid the field. This is one you just let go. I don't know. If it's an interception, you got to call it. Tip ball, it's picked off. Referee Nick Martin's got to call it an interception. Call it what it is. You could see there, Jade Randall clearly got under the football. I'd be upset, too. She's a competitor. She wants that one. For her individual records, of course, and she picked the ball off. I can't believe they said it wasn't. Now a third and six for Denver. Under a minute remaining here at the Showwear Center. Big time pressure. That'll fall incomplete. Towner is having to pick herself up every time. She took some heat right there. She delivered a strike. I don't know why this ball wasn't caught. She puts it on the money. It's almost like the receivers don't want to catch the football. She took a major shot there. That was Shane Norton coming from the edge. And at this point, you've got enough injuries. Just look up at the scoreboard. You're losing 106 to nothing. Just hand the ball off and get out of here. Get out of here. You made a great point. This team is nicked up that we mentioned. They're a mass unit. Get healthy and win some games this year. They return home to face this Seattle team later this year. That was a fumble by number 10, Hannah Turley. A poor handoff by Mary Towner. Did just enough to get back on it. It was a fumble, but I just don't get it. Calling that play fourth and six. Illegal motion on the offense. That penalty is declined. Turnover on downs. First down, Seattle. Jason Gines, I mean, he's throwing the ball the whole second half. Then when he has to throw it, he calls a jet sweep. It has not worked the whole game. Seattle's got to have some class here. This is, I would assume, going to be a victory formation, take a knee, and end this game. You have Michelle Angel playing quarterback and Chris Michelson. Now that looks like a victory formation there. And we get to do this all over again as both teams will face off in Denver on Saturday, July 1st. Denver, hopefully they're healthy then. Hopefully their quarterback's back. They will make a better showing than they did tonight because they've been here now. They know how Seattle plays. They might steal some of their plays. I think it's going to be a much better football game. I think I'm going to get a few raised eyebrows when I say this, but believe it or not, this Denver performance, at least offensively, before Canfield went down, was better than the showing against Chicago. There was some improvement on offense, but I'm more impressed with Seattle. They are in mid-season form, just like their crowd is. What a treat for this hometown crowd. A record-setting night, 106 offensive points. Seattle 
absolutely one of the elite teams in the Western Conference, and you can make the argument throughout the league, win this one convincingly for my partner, Bobby Huco. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.